I'm very impressed by the choice there is. I like the colours, and I'm certainly going to buy one, but it's difficult to choose. <laughs> I think they're tremendous. I really think they're very clever and I wish I had the imagination. I think the quality and design is just wonderful. I've had cushions from fine style work before and my friends have come into the house and said, wow, what a lovely cushion. Where do I get them? I'm not particularly an expert in this sort of thing, but I think they're very good. I think they're worth having. I'm shocked because it goes from something which is quite uh, conservative uh, and traditional something which is quite exciting. There's sort of something for everyone. There's some quite traditional things and then there's sort of really funky modern stuff as well. And I think there is an amazing spread of stuff. I don't know how they decided, but it really works. It is actually very fine work. It's, very, it's top, it's alpha work. It's the best. And the quality of the work stands up very well commercially um, and people are buying it. If you were to bring people in here and not tell them that it was prison-made work, they would still buy. And if prison can be made by fine cell work a little more productive, a little more, we won't say pleasant, but bearable, then I'm very, very pleased. And I think it's a wonderful organization. There was a lot of scepticism and disbelief about the idea of these kind of big prisoners doing fine embroidery at a professional level and actually making meaningful money out of it. It just seems so improbable. You see people change physically when they've been doing the work for a while and it's very, very touching and it's very real. The most unlikely guys suddenly discover that there's something they're good at. Some of them are very artistic and they learn to stitch quite beautifully, some of them. And then, occasionally, they have said, when I get angry, I pick up my stitching rather than get into a fight. We need to be providing opportunities for prisoners, not only to give them some activities to take part in while they're in jail, but to provide them with rehabilitation opportunities. We, we can't just keep them locked up anymore. If you've got to do your time, you've got to find something to do, otherwise it's just that you'll get more violence, more drug taking. At least this gets their mind off of that. It gets the mind off of the environment, I think. For me, it helps while I'm thinking, and it just relaxes your mind and calms you down. Obviously, what I've done is a terrible thing. Sewing so helped me feel like that I'm more in control of myself. Rekindling prisoner's self-esteem is, is everything, because part of the shame of uh, doing a prison sentence is that you've let the people you love down so badly, particularly if they're dependent on you, like your children or your wife. You need money to make phone calls, and buying cell work was a good way of earning a little bit of extra money, which paid for my contact for my children. It weren't a lot, but it was just a little bit, so they knew that their dad still cared and I was doing my bit for them. I've been working for Fine Soul Work for three years, and all that time I've been earning, what, say, £100 a month, and that is fantastic. It's a mix of, of real creativity, of a real experience of beauty and skill, along with something very pragmatic, which is that they can have enough money to pay for their family's train fares to visit them or save money for when they get out for a new suit of clothes. It's like uh, you're not just completely relying on your family. You're just uh, doing something and you're getting paid for that. I make this quilt 200, 300 pounds. I am very happy to these people give me this job because it's about my life. It's not about money, I do this. It's about my life in, you know, in the prison. It's fantastic when you get the appreciation, and I've got dozens and dozens and dozens of letters from customers. This is very practical and real proof uh, of the quality of their work and the actual 
quality of the commissions that they are given, which are for English heritage, for top interior designers, for museums. The idea for the exhibition actually came out from um, a proposal that I put forward to the V&A to really showcase the British tradition of patchwork and quilting in this country. This, this is the bit that we really want to talk about today. We came across the only known transportation quilt in a public collection and this was the Raja quilt and it was made by female prisoners who were being transported to Van Diemen's land in 1841 and so I thought it would be a really interesting idea to juxtapose the Raja quilt with a new piece of work from Fine Cell and somebody came up with the idea that we would use the footprint of Wandsworth Prison and that seemed to be a really good idea. When we were talking about the V&A project I wanted to design something which is different I thought of a hectagon, because if you go to the centre of a wing, it's the shape of the hectagon. So I think that was very important. This is the view of my window, where I can't go nowhere else. And I just thought that if this is all I can see, this is my, my life, and I've got to try and get myself out of it. We were trying to tell the story of what prison life was about. And so it was intriguing to see what these guys came up with. So there was one particular piece um, which was very simply stitched. And it was quite interesting because um, the guy who'd actually stitched it said, well, normally when you come to a new home, and prison is your new home, you're given a bunch of flowers. But what you're actually given when you enter prison is a bunch of numbers. Another piece just focused on three um, pairs of legs with trainers. And the person who stitched that said, well, trainers is the only mark of individuality that you can actually have in prison. And they felt very strongly that that should be in. I'm hoping that the, the HMP Wandsworth quilt will become an iconic object in its own right in 150 years' time. People will want to know why we did this. The one thing about this is that if I should ever go, I would leave my mark on this earth. I'm proud of this. You know, while we're here, you take a bit of a knocking generally, and to have that pride put back is a is a good thing. And all the um, people were getting involved in it, like the actual V&A. And I thought, well, yeah, this is a it's a good thing for the prisoners too to take a pride. In itself, is a point of huge pride to the prisoners um, that this amazing object that has come out of their heads, that is, an, you know, their creativity, is the portrait of their world, has been commissioned by one of the world's great museums, and they're being paid for it. Well, it's just sad that they they, they won't actually see it hanging in the V&A. Um, I mean, we would love to take them all out and uh, take them to the V&A, uh, but uh, that's not going to to happen. I would like to see it in the V&A and be proud of it. I mean, my family will go and see it, and uh, I'd be very proud too if they think that it was marvellous. And I'm going to get released here. I'm going to go and have a look with my family so I can show them what I did in my spare time. So I can say I didn't completely waste my time in prison. The point about fine cell work is prisoners have little or nothing to do in their cells and they spend most of their time in prison behind the door. But the fact is that prisoners are locked up for very long periods, say 17 hours a day, with nothing to do. And we are the only organisation that can give them meaningful, creative and paid work that they can occupy this time with. It's always like this, and what it is, it's like a group of friends meeting together, but what you see is uh, all the stitchers descending on the work and the kits and saying, oh, I want this one, I want that one, and sort of negotiating very quickly to see, you know, who can get what. When we get work from this prison back, we all kind of rip it open and we're quite excited to see what they've done because each time it's different and all the time it's evolving. 
I can't believe that you've done this, you know? You know where it's going to go? Yeah. So it's going to go in Dover Castle. And recently, we got a very big commission from English Heritage for 50 cushions for Dover Castle, which they're refurbishing entirely in the style of the 12th century. And we had to train up between 40 and 50 stitchers to actually learn totally new techniques. It was remarkable because they all learned the new techniques and they've all delivered the work on time. The ladies get a lot from it. It helps with motivation, it gives them something to do in the spare time. The volunteers are brilliant. They work really well with the prisoners. There's a need for that. The prison service hasn't got all the answers. Going into partnership with um, organisations like Fine Cell bring something different and bring something fresh to the table. There is absolutely no problem in terms of our workforce. Our workforce could easily quadruple in size and the work would get better and better and be utterly brilliant because we're working with people who do this work for 20 hours a week. They get very, very good at it. At the beginning, when I was first doing it, yes, I used to go like all 12 in the night and I would say, okay, I'm going to do this last one. So I would continue and when I look at the time, it's late, like after 12 one, I'm still doing fine. So I said, no, I have to put it on to get, a, to get some sleep. Back in my country, they don't have this, but I would love to do it back home. I would love to because it's something that I grow to love in prison. What is very hard to convey is the sheer amount of time that the men and women we work with spend doing this work. I estimated that last year they spent about 400,000 hours sewing in their cells. And we can estimate that in any one of our products there's an average of 100 to 150 hours work. I'm coming in the prison, it's been very hard for me because I've been very young. I, if I'm doing this job, I think about to, to let me time go quickly. If you finish my time, I go back home. It's a calming influence. It's also something to think about. Uh, if I don't do it, eventually I've got to do it. I mean, we get banged up again in the evening from 8, right the way round till 8 o'clock, you know. I mean, a lot of the chaps are sitting up till 2 o'clock and pacing themselves. If they sit down and do this, it calms them down. You don't get so much fighting and arguing going on. I can do this while I'm thinking something else. What, what I'm going to do when I'm going to get released, uh, what my future prospects are. I um, think about my family a lot. I heard the bad news that my son had died. And I found that doing me sewing kept me sane. For my mum, I make very big duvet kaba and if, if she sees this duvet cover, she starts crying. I put some uh, names, I put uh, my language writing, also of, from the best son, which you only have, and he loves you all. She's very happy from me. The, some of the work is absolutely incredible. It really is. It, the, the works of art, they, they really are. And it's got a value. I think it's got a value within the prison. <laughs> There is a growing pride about fine cell work in the prisons where we work. And prisons themselves are places where there is not enough visible achievement. And the whole institution benefits from being able to say, look at what we're doing in Workshop 6. This has been placed in Dover Castle. This is going to the VNA. Our guys did that. And there should be more of that in prison. And over three years, we all work very closely together. Never for one moment did I doubt that you could produce the very best work for which a fine cell is renowned for. But this really is a triumph. I think that fine cell work has given um, the most wonderful contribution to a, a large number of men who have been working with the charity. Right, this one, so this one over here. It's given them a new start in life, a new perspective, a, a fresh outlook. I was always a very nice person. I used to always glare at people and try and, inti I would say, more intimidate people so they wouldn't come and talk to me. Just stay away from it, I don't want to know. 
so it gave me time to reflect on my life. I am proud of him for doing it and sticking to it as well, because it's, it's done him good. What will enable us to grow in the most profoundly meaningful sense is an increase in sales. There is just the most enormous potential in what we do. We have hundreds of inquiries all the time from volunteers. We've got a waiting list of prisons that we can't meet. All our classes have waiting lists. It's just this wonderful formula for something positive that can be done in prison. And that's the story, and it's the story that the prisoners feel. Do you know what I mean? It's not an illusion. There's these beautiful, fine things coming out of these sad, dreary places, you know, from people who've never sewn before and often have incredibly low skills. There's something completely magical about that, you know, and who wouldn't want to support it? Mm -hmm.